Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Robert or Willie Mays. Uh, I'm the VP of Regenerative Medicine and the head of the neuroscience team here at Athersis. Stroke is a clear unmet medical need. It's the second most common cause of death worldwide every year, and it's the number one cause of disability. And in 2021, we're going to have roughly 16 to 17 million strokes worldwide. And out of that 16 to 17 million people, a third will die and a third will be left with significant disability. So that means that in 2021, there's going to be approximately 10 million people in the world who will have their lives and their families' lives irreversibly changed or ended by stroke. The number one type of stroke is something called an ischemic stroke. And 85% of all the strokes that take place are ischemic in nature. Ischemic strokes are caused by the blockage in a blood vessel in the brain. The remaining 15% of strokes are classified as hemorrhagic strokes, and those are caused by the rupture of a blood vessel either in the brain or on the surface of the brain. But for the remainder of the discussion today, we're just going to focus our clinical efforts on treatment of ischemic stroke. And the reason we believe that stroke is such an unmet medical need is there's only two approved treatments in the United States, the use of a chemical called TPA, it's actually an enzyme, and it basically works uh, to go up into the brain when administered intravenously and chew up the clot. Like uh, if you have a clogged drain, this is kind of like Drano, the chemical goes up and eliminates the clot. Um, the problem with this drug is that it has a short window when it can be administered to be safe in ischemic stroke patients. Secondly, it isn't that effective. So out of 100% of the people that would get TPA, roughly a third of the people will show some level of benefit and roughly two thirds will show no benefit or no recovery profile at all. On top of that, uh, roughly one to 3% of people will actually get worse. The second type of treatment that's been approved is something called mechanical thrombectomy. These are mechanical devices that are uh, moved into the, the vessels of the person that have had the stroke, snaked up into the brain, and then these are used to grab the clot and physically pull it out of the blockage in the artery in the brain. But only certain people with certain types of strokes, these are called large artery strokes or proximal strokes that are in specific parts of the brain, can really uh, undergo these procedure, procedures with mechanical thrombectomy. In this country, uh, less than 10% of uh, uh, all ischemic strokes, probably in the range of uh, three to 5% of ischemic strokes are treated with these early therapies. And uh, therefore, the vast majority of uh, ischemic stroke patients are unable to get uh, the, uh, the therapy for various reasons. Um, we need treatments that target the brain itself, not just the blood vessels, but the brain itself, to try to improve the recovery in the brain. And that might be by reducing ongoing damage that occurs in the first few hours to days after a stroke, and it might be improving the brain's ability to rewire itself to overcome the consequences of stroke. And those are areas that really are very underdeveloped by comparison with the uh, hyperacute managements to get the blood vessel open. And there's certainly a good deal to suggest that um, outcomes can be improved. Time is brain. And that's because the longer you take to start treating a stroke patient, the, the less opportunity is thought that they can have a recovery, a meaningful recovery. And that's because after the beginnings of the pathophysiology that take place after the onset of the stroke, you end up beginning to lose neurons and lose brain tissue as a function of the, the clog or the, or the ischemic blockage. And so that sets off a, a cascade. You have neurons that die. Uh, as time goes on, more neurons die, more cells and tissues in the brain begin to die. 
and that triggers an inflammatory response from a certain type of immune cell in the brain that recognizes that there are that there's pathophysiology going on. This sets off an additional cascade where those cells signal the rest of the body, including peripheral immune organs, like lymph nodes, like the thymus, like the spleen, which we've come to understand is a very important organ, and notifies the rest of the body, we're having a inflammatory crisis here in the brain. And so that sets up a second cascade where cells of the peripheral immune system migrate up into the brain, across the blood-brain barrier, and begin to participate at the site of the injury. Also, the immune system in the brain, some of the specific cells in the brain, and for that matter, some of the invading cells from our own peripheral immune response, called microglia and macrophages respectively, they begin to wall off the injury, the site of the injury from the rest of the brain. And our, our bodies and our brains are very smart and we've evolved to have neurons that understand there's something going on, I need to get out of here. And so you have something that's called axonal dieback, where the neurons actually pull away from the site of the ischemic injury and the death, while the immune cells kind of wall off or set up a periphery around the site of the ischemic lesion. And there are some people that believe that the walling off process using uh, secreted factors from these cells called glycosaminoglycans or GAGs, that this walling off is one of the reasons that, that they can only reach a certain level of recovery because that part of their brain is no longer accessible because of the walling off of glycosaminoglycans by the immune cells. So our work, our hypothesis about how our cells work uh, allows us to believe that if we can administer our cells in a, a time window of roughly 18 to 36 hours uh, after the onset of the stroke, that we can stop a lot of the pro-inflammatory cascades that take place and the walling off of this part of the brain that is injured and continues to expand, and we can stop this process so that as people recover, they can make a more complete recovery, show a more profound benefit. If we could have something like the multi-stem that could go to 36 hour, boy, now we're talking just about everybody could potentially benefit. Um, so that's really exciting. I want to talk a little bit about our Masters One data. That was our first phase one, phase two stroke clinical trial using the multi-stem cells. What we learned in that trial was that we could actually treat patients in an extended time frame compared to TPA, which is three to four and a half hours, or mechanical reperfusion, which can go out to 24 hours. We saw it from that first master study that we could actually treat patients out to 36 hours and show that the cells provided meaningful benefit. And we, we did a lot of exploratory biomarker work in the first trial based on our animal studies. Um, and we saw that all of the things we had learned in the animal studies involving turning down pro-inflammation, turning up reparative cells, these were signals that this was taking place in our stroke patient population in MASTERS-1 as, as well. One of the other things we learned, which is exciting, is that we can use our cell therapy on top of the other two stroke ischemic stroke treatments. Our cells provided consistent benefit across multiple layers of the patient subpopulations that we examined in the post hoc analysis of the MASTERS-1 data. With all of the data that we accumulated from the MASTERS-1 clinical trial, we engaged with the FDA at an end of phase two meeting, allowing us to design a pivotal phase three study called MASTERS-2, which is currently actively enrolling patients. We are targeting 300 patients enrolled at 50 to 60 leading stroke centers here in the United States, Europe, and Asia. The MASTERS-2 trial continues to enroll despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Also, our partner in Japan, Helios, 
is expected to reach full enrollment of their ischemic stroke trial using the multi-stem cell therapy, which is called the treasure trial. And we look forward to the data from that trial, which is expected sometime this year.